Good morning. This is going to be part one of a series of short videos on scientific evidence that supports astrology. So let's see if I can share my screen so that we can begin. I need to get rid of a few panels so I can see what I'm doing here. And hold on just a second. Okay, and now I'm ready. Scientific evidence that supports astrology. First, a couple of quotes from Arthur C. Clarke. I don't believe in astrology. I'm a Sagittarius and we're skeptical. And here's a quote for me. Say what you will about astrology still more reliable than statistics. All right. Once upon a time, the leading astrologers of the day were also the leading mathematicians and scientists. People like Newton, Kepler, and Cardano. Today, however, while astrology still has great thinkers and pioneers in statistical and evidence-based astrology, such as Robert Curry and David Cochran, the majority of its practitioners are probably more oriented toward counseling than research. Nonetheless, scientific evidence is mounting regarding the connections between celestial and terrestrial events, what I like to call the astrological hypothesis assumption, or AHA. Thus, today, I want to show you just a fraction of the scientific evidence that exists for AHA. Throughout, I will show you mostly titles and abstracts from published research, and then I will summarize the results and explain why they are important for astrology. Also, many of these papers and abstracts are found at the U.S. government's PubMed website. And what you find there are going to mostly be studies involving the sun or the moon. And copies may be found on my own webpage, www.docpen.com slash arc.htm that arc stands for astrological research center additionally each study that lends support to astrology often contains references to several other studies that are also supportive and thus the evidence for aha is growing larger every day however while many of these studies do support tenets of traditional astrology they also often contain contain results we might not expect. So let's begin. And today I'm just going to show you some evidence from astrophysics. And some of it is just suggestive, not really conclusive, but nonetheless very interesting. And that's uh, going to be the case with this first one. Now back in 1973, this paper was published on correlations between sunspots and planetary positions. And I remember when it came out and it found that sunspot activity has a, at a maximum whenever three plants heliocentrically, that's with the sun at the center, make angles of zero degrees, 90 degrees or 180 degrees with one another. And why is this important for astrology? Well, this is important astrology, the geocentric planetary angles, geocentric with the Earth at the center, those angles of 0, 90, or 180 degrees are believed to cause tension within people, just as the same heliocentric angles cause tension within the sun. Now again, this is not conclusive proof of anything, but nonetheless, it's very suggestive. It's very interesting. It's an interesting coincidence that the kind of planetary angles that heliocentrically cause, if you will, tension within the sun, those same angles geocentrically cause tension within people. All right, the next thing I want to bring up is what are known as Lagrange points. And this is just uh, the opening of a Wikipedia article on Barack. Lagrange points. When one celestial body orbits another, like the Earth's orbit around the sun, there are places called Lagrange points where the gravitational and centrifugal forces 
cancel each other out. And the question is, why are these gravitational voids important for astrology? Well, they are important for astrology because, for instance, if you put the sun at the center, have the earth going around the sun, then the heliocentric angle between two Lagrange points would be a six harmonic angle. Those are angles of zero degrees, six degrees, 120 degrees, 180 degrees. And we usually think of the six harmonic angles as being rather easy, in particular, 60 degrees, 120 degrees. Whether zero degrees is easy or not depends upon the plants involved. And 180 degrees, it's not as tense as a square. It has a little bit of the ease, easiness of 60 degrees incorporated into it. So we are, however, still a long way from being able to conclude from this that geocentric trines and sextiles are easy aspects. But nonetheless, this looks like a step in the right direction. Again, it's... An interesting coincidence that the 60 degree angles, 120 degree angles of separation, which you find when you look at these Lagrange points, which we might think of easy since they're gravitational voids, it's interesting that those are also the easy aspects in traditional astrology. There's a lot of work that would have to be done to go from Lagrange points to traditional astrology, but like I say, this looks like a step in the right direction. It's very suggestive. Okay, the next article. Published in 2011, is there a planetary influence on solar activity? And this study found that gravitational torque exerted by planets can affect solar activity. Why is this important for astrology? Well, this result is unexpected since the gravitational forces exerted by the planets are small in comparison to the forces driving activity in the sun. And the same criticism has been made of astrology, that any planetary gravity would be too weak to affect people on Earth. Nonetheless, this appears to be an example of a butterfly effect, where small changes can be amplified over time and produce big results. In mathematics, the butterfly effect is also known as sensitivity to initial conditions. And this occurs whenever small changes in a starting point result in big differences later on. And this is why we can never predict the weather very far in advance. Slight errors in the measurement of temperature, wind speed, and other weather variables get magnified over time and lead to very different weather patterns. As an example for mathematics, consider the numbers 0.9, 1, and 1.1. They're all very close to one another. But as we raise these numbers to higher and higher powers, we get very different results. So for instance, if you raise 9 tenths to the 100th power, you get 0 0.00002 and so on. It's getting very small. Raise 1 to the 100th power or any power, it just remains 1. But if you raise 1.1 to the 100th power, it's over 13,000, getting close to 14,000. So we get vastly different results from raising these numbers to high powers, even though they start out very close to one another. That is sensitivity to initial conditions. That is what is known as the butterfly effect. Okay, here I have three studies mentioned. Two were published in 2020, one in 2018. On the correlation between solar activity and large earthquakes, a statistical study of the correlation between geomagnetic storms and magnitude 7.0 or larger for global earthquakes during 1957 to 2020. And lastly, the geomagnetic KP index and earthquakes. These three studies found links between large earthquakes and consequences of solar activity, such as the proton density in the Earth's magnetosphere and the occurrence of geomagnetic storms. And KP index is an index of those geomagnetic storms, measure of them. So why is this important for astrology? 
Well, some astrologers have long suspected connections between earthquakes and cosmic events. Lectures, green models, squares by the sun to the lunar nodes, and fourth harmonic aspects by slow mo moving planets. These studies support astrology by at least confirming that celestial connections to earthquakes do indeed exist. And up here is a graphic from one of the articles. It shows that, uh, let's see, on this date, 9 8 2017, there was a spike in the KP index, and that coincided with an 8.1 magnitude earthquake in Chiapas, Mexico. I believe these studies show that sometimes these earthquakes can occur up to 28, 30 days after uh, a spike in the KP index. And on this slide, we see old and new astrology coming together in the uh, earthquake uh, that uh, happened in Turkey on February 7th, around February 7th, February 8th. And in the old astrology, Chiron made a very strong square to Turkey's uh, natal Pluto. So let's see. Yeah. Here we have Chiron at uh, 12 degrees Aries, transiting Chiron, making a strong square to uh, Pluto, natal Pluto, at 12 degrees Cancer. Okay. And uh, that was activating uh, also this uh, square uh, with Mars, natal Mars down here. Also, uh, Contributing to this, perhaps, in traditional astrology, transiting Pluto at 28 degrees Capricorn was making a fairly decent square to natal Saturn at 24 degrees of Libra. And likewise, transiting Saturn at 28 degrees Aquarius, it looks like, was making a good square to Jupiter at 24 degrees Scorpio. So, heliocentrically, however, there were four planets involved in a strong square, trigger, triggering solar activity that elevated the KP index. So, heliocentrically, we had Mars down here, 15 degrees, Cancer squaring uh, Chiron and Jupiter at 15 uh, degrees. Aries and Venus at 18 degrees Aries. And this is from a heliocentric perspective with the sun at the center of everything. And over here, you can see that the AP index was elevated as compared to the kind of activity we see over here. Okay, time dependent nuclear decay parameters, new evidence for new forces. This study done in 2009 or published in 2009 found that sunspots and solar flares can alter the rate of decay of certain radioactive substances on Earth. The authors also speculate as an alternative hypothesis that perhaps as the measuring instruments are being affected. Why is this study important to astrology? Well, this result is important for astrology because it suggests that it is possible for celestial events to affect things on Earth all the way down to a molecular level, and that it can affect non-biological processes in addition to biological organisms. And in this graph over here, we have uh, showing changes in rate of uh, radioactive decay for a couple of substances. And let's see, a couple of radioactive isotopes. Looks like a, a radioactive silicon isotope and radium isotope. And those changes in the rate of decay, they're following pretty well. Another graph, which is related to distance from the sun. Uh, this graph, the red one, the red line is actually a graph of one divided by r squared, where r is the distance from the sun. 
So, uh, let's see, when we're far from the sun, one over r squared, we get low, so that would be these points. And when we're closer to the sun, r is smaller, so one over r squared gets larger, and that would be these points here. Okay, so it's just very interesting that celestial events can affect rates of radioactive decay uh, down here on Earth. And that is it for my slides for today. So I will stop sharing. And that's the end of this first part of uh, scientific evidence that supports astrology. In later parts, we're going to look at a specific uh, scientific field such as chronobiology and heliobiology, uh, which study how solar lunar cycles and the sun affect biological organisms on Earth. And we'll also later on look at a, a variety of studies uh, from statistics, uh, some of which support traditional astrology and some of which uh, suggest uh, new types of astrology, uh, of, you know, connections between celestial and terrestrial events that uh, perhaps traditional astrologers haven't thought about. Okay, well, that's it for today. So, so long, and I hope to see you soon.